This video is part of our course on PySite 6 for widgets, which is on Udemy. The course goes from the absolute beginning, showing you how you can take advantage of cute widgets using the Python API under the PySite 6 or a cute for Python umbrella. And it covers things you really need on a daily basis, signals and slots, a bunch of widgets you can use. We show you how to use Qt Designer. At the end, we also show you how to work with networks and the model view architecture. If you are interested, be sure to check the link in the description below. In this lecture, we are going to organize the code in classes to make things a bit easier to work with. In the last lecture, we did something like this. Even if we didn't use QMain window, but the code looks strikingly similar. And uh, here we will be using everything in the global scope. So we will be doing things in a single file. You see, we are importing sys here to be able to process command line arguments. We are creating a window. And this is a different kind of window that can have menus, toolbars, and things like this. And we will have a chance to learn about this later. You're going to see how it looks in a minute. Another special thing about this kind of widget or window is that we can give it a central widget. And that's what we want to do here to be able to use buttons. So we have the window here. We are going to give it a title using the set window title method. And after that, we will set up a button which is meant to live inside this window here. A button is something you can click on, you can give it the text. And once you have your window set up, again, we have the window. Let's try to draw this here. We have a big window. Inside the big window, we will have a button. And this button is going to have text here, press me. And this button is going to be within this window because of the setting we are doing here. That's how these things work. After we have the window, we will show it and we will start our event loop and the application is going to work. Now, some would argue that putting all the logic for these buttons and things in the same file is really bad. And we need to organize this. The first level of organization we're going to do is to extract the logic for the window in its own class. And we do that using the code you see here. So we will create a class in Python. The class is going to be named button holder, as you see right here. And it's going to be inheriting from QMain window. We will give it a constructor. And if you know Python object oriented programming, this is not new to you. So we will have a constructor. And in the constructor, we will be doing the things we were doing in our main Python file. You see, we are setting up the window title. We are setting up the button and we are telling the button to be the central widget for this button holder class. Once we have this class set up, we will create an object of it in our main Python file again. We have the application object. We created the window. Notice what kind of window it is. It is button holder. And this is going to create an instance of the class that we just set up on top here. Once we have the window, we're going to show it and kick off the event loop. And this is going to extract the logic of setting up the window and doing all kinds of crazy things in this class here. Some would argue that this is still not maintainable. It is bad. We see the logic for the buttons and the windows in our main Python file. Well, we can do even better and create a version three of our application in which we are going to extract the button in a separate file. So we can do something like this. We can create a file and name it button holder.py. And inside that file, we will put in the code to create our buttons and windows and all kinds of crazy things. Now, in the main file, what we are going to do is to import the things we need to use. We will import sys, import application, import button holder. And after that, we will be able to use button holder, even if the details of this button holder class are not in this file here. And our main.py file is going to be a bit easier to look at. And this is the main goal of this lecture here, making it easier to organize our code in classes to make it easier to work with. Now that we know this, we're going to head over to Visual Studio Code and play with us a little more. Okay, here we are in Visual Studio Code and here is the code we will be using here, organizing code in classes. If you go in, you're going to see that it is a folder with the main Python file. So we're going to be starting from there. Let's drag it and drop it on top of Visual Studio Code to open it. And if you look, it is the same thing we had in the last lecture. Let's clean all this up and we will put in the code for this lecture here. 
we will go on top and put in version one of our code and to save on time i am just going to paste in the code here and uh, take a moment to explain it because typing it would really waste our time i will type when i see that it is going to add value but for now we just want the code here in our editor so we are importing the things we need we need q application q main window and q push button and now that you see these new classes that you don't know about it is a good time to go to the search engine and try to learn as much as you can about them. So we can go to our search engine here and say Q main window. Okay, Q main window. And if we go and click here, and again, I do recommend reading as much as you can about this. This is a main window that provides a framework for building an application's user interface. And one thing that is special about this class is that it allows you to set up things like menu bars, toolbars, doc widgets, status bars, and things like this. And it is a really cool thing to have in your application if you need these kinds of things. So we are going to be using a basic version of this, but I do recommend reading as much as you can about this. So let's come back to our editor. So we have a main window object we are creating that is going to allow us to set up menu bars, status bars, and all kinds of crazy things. We are going to give it a window title and down below we are creating a button, Q push button. And again, this is a good time to come to your search engine and look for a Q push button. So let's do that. Okay, come here. You should really drill this habit in your workflow because it's going to allow you to learn more things than I could even tell you in a course like this. So the push button or command button is perhaps the most commonly used widget in any graphical user interface. So you can click on it and things are going to happen. And this is really how it works. This is how you create it and you can connect slots to it and you can do all kinds of crazy things with this button component here. For now, we are just interested in making it show up in our user interface because it is easier to work with. After we have the button, we will tell our main window to use the button as its central widget. Once we have the window, we will show it and we will kick off the event loop by calling the exec method here. This is all we are doing. Now that we have this, remember this is going to auto save because of the setting we did here. You see auto save is toggled on. We can show our terminal, okay? And we can hit up to bring back our command and let's make sure it is highlighted so everybody can see it. This is the command we have right here, python main.py. If we hit enter with this, this is going to show a window. And if we resize it a little bit, I want you to notice some of the things we did. We have our window title on top here. Okay, you can see it right here and we set it up using this line here. And we have a button in the middle of the window right here. This is our button and it is saying press me. You can see the text here and it is the text we set up here. And I really want you to make sure you understand the relationship between the code you type and the things you see when you get to run your application because this is going to give you a firm understanding of how PySide is working to give you the user interface you are seeing here. Now, we have the application here, but some of you might argue that it is really not well organized, to say the least, to have the window and button logic in our main Python file. And we will try to improve on this. What we are going to do is to comment out our version one here, and I am going to put in a pair of block comments in Python. This is how you do it in Python. You have three double quotes and three double quotes and in the middle you're going to put in your code and that's going to be commented out. And I can copy what I want to comment out. Okay, so let's put my code in here and I'll leave the comment on top. This is a one line comment in Python. This is how you do it. And we will do version two. And in version two, we will be creating a separate class, but the class is going to still be living inside our main Python file here to do things in steps. We can go down and do our imports. These are the same things we have been doing for a long time. We will go down and set up our class, class button holder, and it is going to be inherited Q main window. We will set up our constructor and it is going to be calling the parent constructor. And it is going to be calling the super 
constructor or the its parent constructor. Now, this class is going to be inheriting from QMain window, so it is also going to be some kind of QMain window. In other words, it is going to have access to methods we have in QMain window. What that means is that we can say something like self set window title, and we will be we will be stealing this method from QMain window and being able to use that in our button holder class. This is classic inheritance in object oriented programming. So I don't need to say much about this. So let's put in our text. After that, we will set up our button because we have Q push button imported here. So let's say button equals Q push button press me. And the next thing we need to do is to set up the button as our central widget. Again, we have access to the set central widget method because this is a main window. It is inheriting from Q main window. Again, that's what you should understand here. So we're going to say self set central widget and we will pass our button as the central widget. Okay, now that we have this, we can go down and do the usual thing we did on top. For example, we can even copy from what we did before. Okay, so we can create our application object. We're going to go all the way to the bottom. We're going to create our application. We want to create a main window. Now we are going to be creating a button holder. So what we can do is go on top and say button holder. So we will have our button holder here and we will take out the line to set the central widget because we are doing that in our button holder. Now that we have this, I think we are ready to start running this thing. Again, we have our class, which is going to be wrapping around the logic to show the window and putting things inside the window. And we are doing all this in the constructor of our button holder class. This is really cool. Let's bring up our terminal window and make sure we can run this. And if we run this, huh, what is the problem here? I think it is the self thing we are passing here. So let's try to run again. And now you see that we see the same thing we saw before, but now we have extracted the logic for a button holder and setting up the window and putting things inside the window in its own class. And this is really cool. Now, again, we can do better than this by moving this button holder class in its own separate class or its own separate file, I should say. Let's do that. We are going to comment out this. Let's uh, put in our block comment section and we are going to move everything we don't want in here from this section into our comment. And what we will do is to create a new file. Let's copy the code for the button holder class here. And I'm going to copy that. Let's go to the left and create a new file. Call it button holder dot py. And inside this file, we are going to paste in our class. Again, nothing special here. We don't need a queue application here because queue application is used in our main Python file, but we need a queue main window and queue push button. We don't need the sys imported here. Okay. Now what we need to do is to just copy the part that instantiates the button holder thing. Okay. We can do that. And uh, for this to work, we need to import Q application. So let's do that. We can copy the line that does this here. And sys, I think we need sys here. I think we also need sys imported. Let's do that. And now we need to also import the button holder class. We are going to say from button holder, import button holder. And this is going to give us access to these things. And you see that all the dirty work to set up the main window and put things inside the window is moved in our button holder file. And this is really cool. This is what I wanted you to see. And we will be doing things this way going forward in the course to make our organization a bit easier. Let's show our terminal window and run to make sure everything still works. I think we still have something running here. Let's run, let's say Python main. And if we do that, this is going to run and we see our thing here and our code is organized in classes. And this achieves what we set out to do in this lecture here.